Hello, hello, my nasties. Welcome back to the channel. Long time no color in chat. We are going to have ourselves a little color in chat session with our new friend, Tropagoth. If you are new to my channel, hi, hello, welcome, fresh meat. My name is Carla. I am an illustrator, general creative, and I create coloring books and I color them on my channel. So today I am fueled by my boyfriend, you all know, you all know the Earl. Iced Earl Grey Tea. Uh, we're doing a weird little flavor mix today because I'm wearing Carmex lip balm and this stuff is absolutely disgusting and yet I like it. It's that the menthol feeling on my mouth and yet that nasty flavor, it's just, I don't, there's just something medicinal about it that I like even though it's gross, I don't, anyway. Earl and Carmex, that's what we're eating today. And uh, let's get on with the book. I have already selected. I went into my box of cheat markers. And this is a selection of Cali Arts and those crappy chalky crowns, which we're not going to get into today. I've already talked about it. So I am trying to go through my box of cheat markers. Um, the chalky crowns are crap. They were sent to me in PR, blah, blah, blah. You all know the story if you've been here. And the Cali Arts are what I started with in terms of trying to get into markers again. I initially, a long time ago, started with the Prismacolor markers, loved them, still like them, but I'm at a point now in my artistic career where I feel as though I can graduate to Copics. So uh, Copics are my favorite, of course. Prismacolor is definitely up there as well. Uh, Copics only win because they have a better color selection and, of course, the refillability. But otherwise, Prismacolors are wonderful. Um, at the time, when I purchased the Cali Arts, these were the least expensive, highest quality marker available. So they were the cheapest, but they were the best cheap ones. Now there's a plethora of crappy ones out there that are garbage. Um, if the Cali Arts are cheaper still than the Ohuhus and you've never tried markers, go ahead and try the Cali Arts, but I would suggest starting with the Ohuhus these days. Uh, anyways, enough marker talk. Um, I pulled out some markers that I thought I would want to play with today, just greens, uh, purples, pinks, that sort of thing. And I also grabbed a couple of more uh, muted tones because this is Tropagoth after all, so it's going to be bright but I also want to uh, include a little bit of, of moodiness in there. As for page, I want to keep it simple because I want to ensure that I get this color in. Let's do this one. You know what? We'll oh, is this the first page? This is the first page. We are going to start with the first page. I want to ensure that I can get something done today so that I can have something to edit and upload this week because I am quite busy with, oops, camera is doing things. Oh no, you fell off your little grippy thing right here. Are we good? Okay, we're good. Uh, I am busy this week with my vintage, my art and vintage shop, Coco Naughty. And then if you've been following my shenanigans, you will know that I have a, uh, a home fragrance line that is going to be soft launching as well in July. So your girl is busy. I don't have a lot of time to spend on a color in chat, but damn it. She's cute. She's Tropagoth and I want to color in it. So we're going to make time. We are going to make time. I did purposely want to start with something that was a little bit more simple, but I do want to put a little something in the background. Just a shape that we can fill in. How about we do, we're likely going to go with a triangle because I think we all know triangles are my favorite shape. I quite like pointy things, pointy plants, pointy animals, pointy people. <laughs> I don't know, I just love, I mean, look at my nails, damn it. <laughs> I think it's quite clear that I enjoy pointy things. Let's do this a little bit sharper even. Let's go bloop. And then we'll How's that? Do we like that or should we go? I 
let's see the kind of mess that I made here. So how's everyone doing? You all have been working your magic already in Tropagoth. I am filming this uh, during the tail end of June, which means my book has been released for two weeks now. Well, about a week and a half, actually. But uh, you all already have the copy in your hands. Many of you scooped it up the day it was released. Thank you, you are incredible. And you all seem to be enjoying it. I have been, of course, peeping your pages on Instagram. I've been sharing a few of them in my stories. You guys are just doing wonderful work as always. If you do not follow me on Instagram, follow me on Instagram so that you can see uh, the stories and everybody's lovely work. Of course, you don't have to look at my stories. You can simply look up the book's hashtag. All of my coloring books have a hashtag, so you can just type in the hashtag and see everybody's beautiful work. You guys are fully embracing the Tropagoth life. <laughs> I love it. The theme of this book is, uh, it's a little out there, right? It's goth and tropical, but it works, right? Is it not who I am to an extent? I don't necessarily identify with the word goth, but I'm a, I'm a spooky girl. I'm a spooky tropical girl, yeah? Spooky tropical girl who lives in the desert. Make it make sense, but in my brain it does. <laughs> All right, so I want to do right off the, let's see, right off the top, we are going to give her pink skin. Why? Because I'm in the mood for pink skin. Uh, this color is called fluorescent rose. Oh yeah, that'll do. Check that out. Mm -hmm. We're going to do a pink. Cute. I like it already. So tell me what you all have been up to since the last time that we spoke. I have not uploaded a vlog, I have not uploaded a color in chat or a sketchy Saturday in quite some time and that's because for a couple of weeks I was out of town so I wasn't really doing much. I was working on a ton of paintings which again if you follow me on social media, Instagram in particular, you've already gotten peaks of those paintings. So yeah, even though I'm out of town, I just, I have to work, I have to work. So I worked on a ton of little paintings which uh, need to be finished up here at home. So I started them while I was away, came home, finished them up, and now they just need to be varnished. And uh, yeah, I was gone for a couple of weeks. And then I came home and it was time to put last minute, it was time to tie up loose last minute ends for my new little shop white bat wax which is my home fragrance line I'm not going to talk too much about it here in this video because I have mentioned it um, in other videos and you will be hearing more about it likely I will touch on it in my blogs but it is primarily a Coco Naughty thing so when I do mention that brand I will likely talk about it more over on the Coco Naughty channel and the Instagram. But basically, if you are new and you have no idea what the hell I'm talking about, Home Fragrance, Carla, you're launching a new brand, what? Okay, just super quick. Uh, I have decided to branch out into Home Fragrance because I, I own an art and fashion boutique and I want to turn it more into a lifestyle brand. So I want to offer vintage home decor pieces, home fragrance, that sort of thing. And so this is the next step. This is the next step in Coco Naughty Evolution. And it will be an in-house brand for Coco Naughty. It's called White Bat Wax. But also I will be opening a Etsy shop for the wax, for the wax melts. Eventually we will do candles, but I'm starting with a wax melt. So that's that on that. Again, not gonna talk too much about it here today, but yeah, that's just, I'm letting you know what I've been doing, what has been keeping me busy, and I'm excited for it. I have one of my waxes burning right now. I have crystal jungle burning, to, not burning, but melting today. It's appropriate, we're in the jungle. So we are crystal jungling it up. I want to give her, should we do green hair? 
let's do green here. Purple would be cute, but that's kind of a cop out. So we are going to do this lovely jungle green. What is it called? It's called emerald green, technically. Yeah, this is an accurate color, emerald green. So given that Tropagoth is a rather unconventional theme, number one, yay, I'm glad that you are embracing the theme because it is a little out there, but use this as encouragement to stretch your creative muscle. I mean, as always, I always encourage you to do this, but what I mean by that is my books are already a playground. The theme should help you to further explore your playtime. So, Tropagoth, Tropical Goth. Okay, we understand it's going to be dark, moody, but tropical. Now, kick it up a notch and turn things on their head. For instance, the foliage. Tropical foliage is typically bright, lush greens and such, right? Well, why not try doing bright pink foliage or bright orange or neon, I don't know, blue foliage. Just play around a bit. It's kind of a tropical fantasy on spooky acid. We'll, we'll, we'll say it that way. So just play, have fun, play. And in this instance, I will be practicing what I preach. I think I'm going to be doing the foliage should we do purple? Purple or orange, I think, is what we are going to go for. Maybe. This book is so cute. It's just so perfect for... I mean, all of my books are cute. Yeah, I'm going to say that. Duh. <laughs> but she's perfect for summer because, duh, tropical. Hello. But also, she's spooky, so she's going to carry you right into spooky season which is very appropriate for those of us. Raise your hand, any of my fellow warm weather freaks, if you reside in the desert or anywhere in the south, anywhere where it's hot, 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 up until Halloween, baby, Tropica has you covered. Okay, let's do, I pulled out two different shades of purple and actually, I think what I want to do I have my set of Ohuhu pastels. Uh, let's see. This is the purple that I want to go with. Mm, that looks a little bit more blue. We've got viola. Oh, that's pretty, but not not quite what I'm after. No, okay, the the uh, pastels aren't going to work for me in this instance. Let's see about... You know, I don't think I have anything in my repertoire that will be what I'm looking for. Um, waste too much time digging around for something which may or may not exist. But let's give this one a shot. Or wait, which one was it? Was it this one? This one. Let's see. It's called Lavender. Okay, I can dig that. Oh, shh. Of course, of course the frickin' marker is going to be dying. Um, uh, I'm going to reduce it, but that takes a while. It's this, I tell you, it's that time now where I've had these markers sitting around for several years, and these are the crap ones, these are the chalky crown ones, which are crappy markers to begin with, but the longer they sit around in this desert climate, the faster they are going to dry out, but this one, I think it's merely the alcohol vehicle, which is drying out. There seems to be plenty of pigment in this marker, 
So it will benefit from a simple rejuice, but the problem is, is rejuicing it means I have to let it sit there for quite a little while before I can pick it up again. So uh, we're just gonna force it to do as much as it possibly can, and then I will rejuice it. Rejuicing doesn't work forever, of course, because the pigment will eventually run out, but in this instance, it is clear that the marker does have pigment in it. It's simply, once again, the vehicle, which is the alcohol, in which the pigment is suspended. That is what is uh, crapping out on us. Okay, so let, let's, 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 let's rejuice. Our juicy little baby is going to be sitting over here, and I would like to do, I'm going to play with her makeup. I want to do, damn it, that would be a cute color for her. No, you know, I want to do a bold gold, perhaps? I don't know. ahead and just do that damn dark purple. I pulled out this dark purple and I've been hesitant to use it and I think we just we just we just, we just gotta do it. We just gotta do it. So these two are essentially the same. Oh no we can't do the dark purple because then it will touch this. Okay so the background is going to be <sighs> you're kidding me. You're kidding me this one's low on juice as well so we are going to play with neon green. What is this neon green? It says grass green. So, dying grass maybe? <laughs> but, okay, we're gonna do... This is cute, I like this color. I like this color quite a bit actually. Ooh, I like this color. I want this in a Copic. This is the perfect kind of acidy lime green. It's not quite as bright as I would like it, to be honest, but I have been on a quest for an acid green that was this tone, just a little bit brighter, and I have had, I mean, it has been impossible to find it. Ooh, this is exactly what I'm looking for, just a, almost exactly. Just needs to be kicked up a couple notches in brightness, but oh, this is nice. And this is that crappy chalky crown. Okay, I have to keep this swatched somewhere. I'm gonna make a note of it so that I can keep it in my bag so that when I'm out shopping for markers, Copic markers, I can scoop it up. I love this shade. I'm happy but also defeated because these are crappy markers and I can't get refills for these, but it, it has to exist out there in a Copic, something very close. Ugh, I love, I love, I love, I love, I love. And let's do... I want to put some orange in there somewhere. You know, I want to do this a different color, not pink, or rather not purple, but I want to go with some sort of magenta, perhaps, a mulberry color. Um, let's try to do an ombre. Let's do a gold. Oh, this is going to be tough because of my ceiling fan. So I'm working with alcohol markers and then I have the ceiling fan on. And on top of that, I'm working with uh, not super juicy markers. So this is going to be difficult, but we're going to attempt it. So again, for all the naysayers who say blending isn't possible on that paper, mm, no, you are just a defeatist. And oh, this, this was not the color that I wanted. <laughs> That's not the color I wanted, so we're going to have to try something quick here. Uh, it swatched very differently on the other paper. <laughs> yeah, that's not the golden yellow I wanted, so that muddied things up quite a bit. Whoopsie! Well, we'll try to, we'll try to clean that up. 
and make something happen here. Oh, yuck. That was not what I wanted. Shoot. Okay, well, shit happens, and uh, we'll, we'll just keep working with it. So I was ranting about how markers, uh, you can blend anything, and you can on this paper. However, uh, when you start with the wrong markers, you're going to make a boo-boo. But even still, regardless, boo-boo or not, I still blended those markers, did I not? You can see a little bit of an ombre action happening here. So it is possible. <laughs> It is possible, but shoot, it's just unfortunately not the color combo that I was after. Oh, you're dead dead. You are dead dead. Okay, let's try this hot pink. The key when blending markers on this paper is to work fast and preferably don't have the ceiling fan blasting right above you because if you do, well, it's going to dry out your markers and you will not be able to blend quite as well. Ugh, that's a disappointment. I'm sad. No, not really. It's not that big of a deal. We'll figure out how to mitigate that boo-boo the more we get into the page. But I wanted this to be a bright kind of orange tinted fuchsia color. Fuchsia with an orange tint, if that makes sense. And um, didn't quite achieve it. Kind of, sort of. But uh, whatever. Don't agonize over silly little mishaps on your pages. That's more of a gradient there. I'm trying to go for not a realistic foliage look, but I'm trying to get the colors not even, so I want little patches of yellow of discoloration as you would find on a natural leaf. Now since I made a boo-boo with the color to begin with, now I can at least play with it and have some happy accidents with the tonal variation. And it looks kind of cute, right? There you go. Not bad, not bad. I'm making a god-awful mess of my art table here, though. <laughs> I'm slamming Copics everywhere. There's alcohol spraying everywhere. We gotta work quick, though. We gotta work quick. We gotta work quick. There. And then, of course, I will handle the, the color unification later in the uh, final stages of the artwork when I begin adding the highlights and all of that kind of thing because you know your girl's going to put some gel pen on here. I can't not do that. And since we are on the topic of blending, let's go ahead and pull some of that neon yellow into her skin. I'm just in the mood to overcomplicate today, <laughs> apparently. Okay. These here, what color should we do these? Should we go with a standard, just bright pink, or should we pull some of that purple down? I want to pull some of that purple down that is being juiced. How about we blend those as well? We, look, we've already started. We've already started making a mess. We may as well continue with the mess. We're going to do a purple pink ombre. Very cute. I like it already. Very cute. See folks, you can create 
blended effects on this paper. I will forever call people out, <laughs> especially, well, only on this channel. I don't watch anyone else's channels, but on my channel, because I, and what I mean by that is I don't tell other people what to do in their own home, right? But when people come into my home and try to tell my people, you can't do this, you can't do that in that paper, it's impossible, so don't even try. Uh, no, you don't tell people what they can and cannot do. Because I get that. I get people who come into my channel who will leave a comment. It doesn't happen frequently, but it does. And people will say, hey, Carla, we need your advice. We want to try this, but uh, we don't know how to go about it. So what markers would you recommend? Blah, blah, blah. They simply ask for my advice. But before I can get to that comment, someone will jump in and say, no, you can't do that. I've tried and I failed. And to you, I say, simply because you tried and failed once, twice, three times doesn't mean someone else is going to fail. And I would tell you to try again. What's with this giving up? nonsense. Don't give up, you guys. The first attempt is very rarely going to be successful. Trust me on that. If you guys could see my old sketchbooks from junior high, that's when I started getting into artwork was junior high and high school, late junior high, early high school is when I really, really started diving into it. Uh, yeah, a lot of my artwork was absolute shit. Totally shit. Not to say that I'm a grandmaster now, but I am leagues ahead of where I was at the time. I want to do something funky with her eyeshadow, but I don't know quite what. I know I pulled a dark green, right? Darker green, yeah, this right here. You know what, we're gonna, we're gonna play the ombre game with this as well. Your girl is just having fun with the gradients today. <laughs> you know what it is, I think it's just a sick, masochistic drive because I have the ceiling fan on and I'm like, you will not fell me. I will not be felled by this damn ceiling fan if I wanna blend my colors, damn it. See? Moral of the story, don't let anybody tell you what to do, especially a stupid ceiling fan. You, we're gonna get corny for a second, you are your own limitation, period. Cute. Okay. The skulls are going to be what color? And everybody just, there was a collective gold, 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 wasn't there? Uh, let's see. Gold would be cute though. Um, how about we do, kind of dig in the idea of some hot pink skulls. We're gonna go some, we're, we're gonna go hot pink on these little babies. Oh my god, what a fun page. It's going by so quickly. I have nothing to talk about. I've already informed you on the goings-on around here, of what I've been up to, what's been keeping me busy. Uh, why don't we chat a little about, about what's to come in July and August for the channel. There's not going to be much uh, different, if anything. I would like to hop on and do a live with you guys sometime in July. I would like to get on a loose schedule with lives, meaning I would like to do maybe one a week, maybe twice a month, something like that. So we will be trying out a vlog at some point. Uh, I don't want to schedule anything in because that's one thing I don't need to do to myself is impose a schedule on something that's just supposed to be fun and rather off the cuff. So we'll just put it up in the air that yes, there will be a live coming for those of you who are interested. And let's see, live video, Sketchy Saturdays will be back. It is that time of year where the desert is heating up significantly, which means I do not leave my apartment until about 7 p.m. to avoid the 
searing fireball in the sky. Vampire that I am, we can't have that because that is dangerous. So none of that. Uh, sketchy Saturdays, color and chats, and I guess just vlogs. So nothing out of the ordinary, but I feel as though because the past month or so has been fairly quiet over here, some of you are probably wondering whether or not I'm planning on abandoning this channel. No, absolutely not. I just, once again, I've just been busy with getting my new little brand off the ground and we're getting there. We're getting there. We are literally this day a week away from soft launch. So yeah, it's just one thing at a time. One thing at a time. I need to hyper focus on certain projects until they are at a certain state of completion before I can uh, resume normal duties, right? Makes sense. So I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. There are just going to be periods of uh, minor slowdowns. That's all. But I'm still busy. I'm still working. I would like to work on tons of art for Coco Naughty this summer. I already have a ton of little pieces over here. Again, if you see my social media, you have peaked those pieces of art. They're little miniatures that I sell for, they're super inexpensive, they're super affordable art. They are under a hundred bucks and then I have the larger pieces that are over 100 but still affordable for their size and it just feels good to get back to listing original artwork, miniature artwork, just affordable originals. I don't make it my goal to make things affordable on purpose. You know, I I am a strong, strong, strong proponent, supporter, call it what you will, of knowing your worth as an artist. And I know I should practice what I preach because many times I will sell 100% original pieces of artwork and illustrations for under 50 bucks. I have been known to do that quite often. And uh, that's not a good thing, but also, I'm okay with it at this point in my life, but I'm saying all this to say that if you are out there looking to become an artist full-time and all of that good stuff, don't price your originals, don't price your handmade goods, don't price anything too low. Please do your research. I get people who have Etsy shops or who are looking to open Etsy shops and they are selling things way too cheaply and it's because people don't understand that their time is worth money, their skill is worth money, and also Etsy fees are going to kill a lot of your profit. This is why I've stopped selling originals on Etsy. Will I ever do it again? I There may be an instance where it will be a limited situation, limited something, special something, I don't know, but I, I highly doubt it. At this point, I've settled into my Etsy shop being a place for what remains of my print stock and my downloadable coloring books and some stickers, but I'm moving all new prints and stickers to my online store. That's just the way to go, is to open your own store, but you can't be lazy about it. You have to be dedicated to your store. You can't just create it and let it sit there. This is not a, a small business talk, so I'll just I'll just leave it at that. I'm just in love with this color. I have to. I have to. I have to use it. She's got to have this funky green eyeshadow. All right, I am going to work in silence on this for a bit, and then I will catch up with you guys a little bit later. I'm not going to do a whole lot on it. I just want to put some more base colors on. Yeah, I will catch up with you soon. Let us continue with our tropical little lovely. Yeah, it is the next day. I wasn't able to finish it yesterday, but that's okay. We are back, and I did a little bit of work on it while I was away from you. I went in with the gel pens, and I did all of that. Uh, there's still some more that needs to be done with the gel pen, but we are closing in on the end here. She's looking cute. 
very simple. We didn't go too out there with this one. And going out there just isn't all that necessary all the time, right? Keeping it fairly simple. And I think she looks good. I am going to go ahead and finish it up today. And I will be adding gold, of course. I don't know if I mentioned that earlier in the process, but your girl is, of course, going to reach for, say it with me now, which pen is it? Ready, ready? The what? The gold sparkle pop, okay? For those of you who are not in the U.S., it is called the, oh my God, what is it called? Dual metallic. They're called, they're by Pentel, Pentel Dual Metallic. It's the same pen. In the U.S., it's called the Sparkle Pop. So, same exact thing, crappy name, an uglier pen body here in the U.S. Because, you know, we don't know anything about aesthetics in this country, and I will say that till I'm blue in the face, but <laughs> we're getting dramatic over a pen. I know, but I feel some type of way about this, this pen. <laughs> if you've been here for a while, you know, you know, it's just a weird pet peeve of mine that doesn't deserve any more of my brain space. Okay, um, I, uh, do I want to add another gel pen color? I feel as though we've been through this where I want to go for a lime green gel pen, but I don't have one, so I always end up going with yellow. Wait a minute, I do have, let's test this. I do have a green moonlight. Give it a little testy test. Yeah, that'll do. That will definitely work. So let's. Yeah, let's go ahead and add some light green gel. And then I will show you what I'm going to do with the gold. And then I will likely finish this page off camera. I just wanted to check in today because it has been a little while since I was chatting. And uh, I did, again, some of the highlighting, or most of the highlighting anyway, off camera. So let's do the green. And... grab that gold so you can see that she's got some jewelry on she's got some rings in her hair why why do I do what I do I don't know I just do so her hair jewelry we're gonna go ahead and slap some gold on there very cute and then we'll finish up her makeup and all of that and then she will be done. I'm telling you, this page was very simple, very quick, even though yes, I got it done in two days, but still I wasn't sitting here for hours at a stretch getting it done, it was very quick. And of course, if you at home are not chit-chatting while you are coloring, you will be able to finish it much quicker. So use this book as you will. Spend hours and hours and hours agonizing on a page if you'd like, or just slap some color down really quickly and just have a quick session, it's fun. Just a little de-stress, yeah? A little detox from your day. And let's give her some lovely, I don't know if I want to do her cheek makeup right here, gold or black. That's why I left it blank, but she's definitely getting a strip of gold liner. Like so. Cute. And we're going to bring some of this gold into the skulls, of course, because Ralph did not make an appearance today. There are no golden skulls here, but we, we got to slap some gold on there. And yeah, let's just go ahead and do her cheeky, her cheeky in gold. And then I will complete most, 
if not all of the final details off camera and then I will catch up with you at the end for the final show and tell. Well, this took a turn, didn't it? I ended up going for a full black background and some neon yellow to give it more of a neon tropical club at night sort of atmosphere. Very, very, very tropogoth, if you ask me. It's nighttime, it's a club, it's got neon 80s vibes. I like it. Still very simple, deceptively simple. I know it looks like there's a lot going on, but truly it's not. It's just mostly a product of the highlights that make this look a bit more complex, but I think she's cute. There was a moment where I was bored with it and thought, you know, I don't think I like this page. This white background is kind of killing me, even though I, I set out wanting to do something very simple, but now we're gonna zhuzh it up a little bit. We're gonna go full on, full on neon situation, and that's what we did. And uh, she's cute. One of my favorite pages? No, definitely not. But she was a fun little tropogoth excursion. I think she uh, she captures the tropogoth look adequately. So that is going to do it for this color and chat. I hope that you enjoyed hanging out with me for our first tropogoth color and chat episode. There will of course be more. Everything you need to know will always be down below. Links to the art supplies, to the books, to my social media, all of that good stuff. And with that being said, I'm getting the hell out of here. So enjoy yourself. Do something fun with yourself today, damn it. I don't care if you're staying at home. Pull out your sketchbook. Pull out your crayons. Do something, all right? I will see you. Oh, 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 oh my God. It's been so long since I've done one of these. We need the outro. Be bad, be good. I don't give a damn which. Just come back in one piece. <laughs> there, we squeezed it in there. All right. I will catch you guys in the next one.